Hello and welcome to the series finale of this year's Rugby League Back Chat. We have so much to talk about this week as ever, and we've got a special panel to do just that. We have the editor of League Express, Martin Sadler, leading player agent, Craig Harrison, and Castleford Tiger star, James Clare. Chents, welcome. We're going to talk about the Grand Final, the Super League Grand Final in a little while, but let's just roll back a few days, or pretty much a week now. We have a transatlantic team in Super League for the first time ever, Toronto on the way. James Clare, what's your take on this from a player's perspective? Do you know what? I've always been a massive fan of Toronto and what they can potentially bring to Super League, but it's always just been a potential kind of factor. So it'll be nice to see over the next year or so what they can actually do and whether they can back all the, the promises that they'll be making and things like that. But I mean, for a local cast lad, I was just saying earlier, I'd have rather Featherstone been in here just because that kind of rivalry, I mean, we lost them in the Cup a couple of years ago and I'd have loved to have seen that because I know how passionate the Featherstone fans are, but yeah. we'll see what Toronto can bring in a couple of weeks. Right, well, let's just go on to that quickly. Nothing against Featherstone. They've had a fantastic season, haven't they? Tremendous season. Would it have been good for the competition, though, as much as you have that local rivalry, if you had three teams from a Wakefield postcode <coughs> in the top flight? Well. In my opinion, there's that many good kids that are coming from Wakefield postcodes when you look at your Lot Lane, your Castle Panthers and all your Stanningley, Stanningley teams. Mm -hmm. And that would have just, for me, promoted Rugby League from the youth bed and it would have had more young players coming for every single week. And then people like Craig would have been picking them up when they're about 12 <laughs> years old and telling them they're going to make no, it. No, never that boy, never that age. Gone from there. <laughs> Run a mile from that. <laughs> right, Craig, what's your take on it? You, um... I think they're just amazing for the game. That's it, simple for me. That It's a competition. The competition will be won by the best team. Yeah. Um, the rules are set. They have no, they've took nothing out of the pot. They've mm -hmm. asked for nothing. They've done it the hard way. They even tried to, you know, change things a week before, put a bit more pressure on Brian Mack and he's... They pulled it off. I have no time for anybody who has anything negative. Move on for me. You know, I thought Featherstone were amazing mm -hmm. right through the season. I was so happy. Callum McClelland and Ashton Golden. Uh, thought they were He's fantastic. improved an awful lot, Callum McClelland. Oh, and Golding, actually. Uh, I, I, think I, 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 really I well. question the improving because you're the mm. best 16-year-old I've ever seen. So <coughs> mm. so people say that and I say, you must Well, let's say he's had him. the chance to shine. Yeah, he played yeah. in a grand final at 16, yeah. under 19s. He was sensational that year with children. Yeah. So... He, he he just he just did what he should have done yeah. uh, with with the opportunity. <coughs> Ashton Golden, you know Ashton's Ashton. He'd played car park with same enthusiasm. He'd play anyway. I've not seen a, I've not seen anybody like. He's Ashton. a tremendously positive influence, is Ashton, isn't he? I, no, I think, that's that, 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 what I call a culture player. But yeah. Again, he, he, you'd have him in Sam Ellis. You yeah, could put yeah. Sam and him uh, anywhere and said, "You fancy playing rugby?" They play it in car. They play it, and they'd be like, "Oh, it's the best game ever!" You're like, <laughs> "Really?" You know, everyone gets a bit depressed. They don't yeah. get depressed. Ashton, <laughs> I played a tag tournament with Ashton this year at Leeds, anyway. and he give a he give a team talk to to like business people, and and I'm looking and thinking, they're looking, is he serious? And he's like, "Oh, we can win this. We really, <laughs> we really need to complete sets now." I'm like, "No, leg off, leg off," and he just carried that on right through. So he's. What did what did he say when you dropped the ball on the field then? Well, actually, I've got great. I've got hands like Velcro. I did a couple. Of, you know, he, 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 he were really. He's just that's how he is. And I can remember sat afterwards, and my mate went, "Is he for real or is he making it up?" And I said, "No, no, he's for real. He's, he's everything he's doing. He's, he's Ashton." Yeah. Um, I think that's just what Huddersfield, for example, just in case he's going there. Yeah. That's just what they need, actually. Well, it's funny to say that. <laughs> <laughs> he's. Um, He's uh, by the time this comes out, I know he's hundred percent. Yeah, uh, I, I actually spoke to Richard about certain players with that culture, and I said I felt they needed more defensive-minded, mm. enthusiastic, or enthusiastic about defending. Come on, yeah. it's a, usually you're looking, you're thinking most full backs are trying to avoid any any form of tackle, and, and he's actually looking for that to be his strength. Yeah. Mm. I, I don't think you'll see that. You can't name more than three or four who literally are looking to make that. Yeah, his strength. Do you know he's a player as well? Actually, we played Leeds last year at Ellen Road, and he was on the bench. And he's a, the only fullback that I've ever seen in the history of that's come on at hooker and give it the absolute <laughs> best job. And he, he was just in and around everything, Crazy. making his tackles, putting his body on the line, and did what he needed to do for the team. So, like you say, that's a big signing for us. Big sign. He's, 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 he's incredible. Yeah. On um, Toronto on the field, how will they compete with that squad that they've got at the minute, Martin? In your opinion. Well, having watched the game against Featherston, I thought they played really well, actually. Mm. And Featherston played extremely well um, to, you know, be in the lead for 50-odd minutes. Uh, I thought it was a great game. Um, they're obviously going to have to make some improvements, though. Um, 
and I, you know, I'm not quite sure at this stage exactly who they're going to be signing. I don't know whether Craig's got any irons in so the fire. So I always got him on. Yeah, of course. <laughs> we're doing the playing out with Toronto. We're in the middle of summer, which I can't. If you ever see Matt break it, she usually talk to me. Uh, <laughs> this is true. <laughs> so Cheers for just breaking making, all my contacts. I'm making on famous that. now, trying my best to. Um, but he's, um, he, 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 they've got a big signing already done, which they have to surplus to and get him Super League status. They'll announce it, but I, I, I'm sure they'll go big. They, they mm. look at the style. Well, they're they've tremendously done ambitious, the aren't they? they let's where do you go from where they go? The, the yeah. Yeah. They've had Super League. They've had NRL players playing in Champ Ones. <laughs> yeah. Well, they, they have. Martin Vickers on the show last week, and he confirmed that they had spoken to Sonny Bill Williams about joining the club not too long ago. So that could the be. Him, they did say something yeah. huge. Yeah, yeah that yeah. is the caliber of player that they're, they're talking to, and I'm sure there are clubs in Super League that are. Well, James, you think this well, could be playing Sonny Bill Williams? Great for the comp. Yeah, but for me, Toronto, they've got an outstanding squad anyway, and they've mm. got one of the best coaches that has won everything at Super League level. And in Championship, he's coached them to win Championship games, and he's coached them to win a million pound game. So. Yeah. For me, as long as they keep hold of Brian, that they're going to be winning Super League games with the squad they've got. If they get big signings, they get big signings. Yeah. The really interesting thing is, um, from the point of view of everybody else in Super League next year, they're not going to be a London Broncos, are they, who come up and people think they're just going to win one or two games mm. and then shock everybody. People are going to assume that they are going to win a lot of games from the start. And Toronto, are, now they're coming up, they're not going to put themselves in a position where they could get relegated. So the question is, if they're not going to be, somebody else is going to be in danger, aren't they? And, and that, that will certainly get other clubs worried, I would think. And, you know, well, they'll, spend, they'll spend 2.4, 2.5, yeah. you know, with Marquis. Yeah. They'll have two Marquis plus you 1.8. Yeah. They're going to be absolutely loaded. There's no way yeah. <laughs> they'll be a top six. No, no. It's, uh, it would have been good, wouldn't it, if you could have got all the chairmen in a room when that playoff game was going on Saturday. Craig and, and see the reactions when Toronto took the lead and when Feverson took the lead. Yeah, and see, see who they were moment. cheering for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think it's a lot of bluff. I think I think a lot yeah. of them have called it out, but when now it's in and now they rejoice it. And, and I, I'll say this to you: you you watch the the ones who are moaning, watch the faces when they go there next year. Because I have always said to you, I've never been. So how rude it is that I comment on something I've never yeah. done. So I, I sometimes just say, how can I comment? I've never done it. Every single person who's been. Yeah. Don't have a negative oh, word. So Matt, how, Matt, dare, Matt. how dare some chairman say something when the, it's like saying I don't shop there. Why do you shop there? No, I've never shopped there. Yeah, you're yeah, 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 like a bit it. mad. You, you can't make a comment on something you haven't done. Well, interestingly, I was reading something about Gary Hetherington. He was he was there this week and and came back and said it was absolutely marvellous. Hundred percent. You know, I, I think Gary had gone. It is. Gary had gone along with you know looking at a player. Yeah, Leeds had played first class. Gary and Catherine had the. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He was actually at the Sunday game. I can't, I can't work this out. I'm still trying to work this out. He was at Sunday's uh, Super League Awards night. Super League Awards because I saw him and I, I double. And I seen him in yeah. Toronto and I thought, no way has Big G made it from there <laughs> to there. <laughs> that's some first class. Uh, yeah. yeah, the expenses in G. <laughs> the um, just on Featherstone, James. I mean, no think you should be taken away from what they did this year. And they lost to be disappointed. But what? Well, they had what, about yeah. six people turn up to pre-season, I think. Yeah, or yeah. six, nine yeah. people, something like that. So the amount of turnaround that they've had. Uh, but like you say, it's people like Ashton Golden that have spent a little bit of time there, that they've brought the teammates together. And then an outstanding coach that's got people playing on the pitch. And then mm. an outstanding little fan base. I know it's not the biggest fan base at Ferguson, but they've got some loyal fans that have been through thick and thin. Mm -hmm. And they've massively helped them get the performance. Jewel Reg worked with them, did it? Yeah, definitely. Like you say, if there's one club who could say, you yeah. know, best the, example, the, yeah. the, the best, the, the centre, yeah. you know, they, you look right through it. Leeds have had a massive bearing on what they've done. Yeah, they've, they've done Walters, then they've they've thingied him Briscoe. off. They've done Briscoe. They've, they, they, it has worked. Leeds yeah. and Featherstone, Jewel Reg has worked. Harry mm -hmm. Newman is a prime example. Well, it worked. Yeah. Yeah. We could go all day then, couldn't we? So, yeah. on another note, Ralph Rimmers spoke after, and he was asked about Championship TV coverage next year didn't sound too convinced what was going to happen there did he now well i don't think he knows yet does he? no but, but is that it's going to be wouldn't it be a blow if with toronto going not paying for it if there was then no championship coverage again it'd be a step back well i find it almost inconceivable that there wouldn't be because mm. you know the championship crowds have grown grown this season the competition has been great in most people's opinions mm. uh, i mean toronto have obviously led the way and 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 d did get all those games on earlier in the season when they were paying for it but surely Sky must realise. I mean, I think Sky, um, these 6.30 kickoff games on a Sunday evening that they've been running recently, 
you know, I think that's a great time for the championship. You've been personally. moaning about that in the well, office because we've got to stay in later. <laughs> it's not a great time if you're producing a Sunday night, a Sunday night <laughs> rugby league newspaper. But from the point of view of TV coverage and yeah. that sort of thing, or perhaps they could go fill the Thursday slot, you know, because a lot of Super League clubs don't like that Thursday slot. You know, that, that might be open for um, the championship as well. Who knows? It, it's, yeah, but you can't but, ask but players to be playing regular no, Thursday night games when they've not, been uh, all uh, week only, if, only if there were derby games, I suppose. Yeah. You know, but, I, uh, I, I, I can't see. Is it me? Or everyone, everyone, I know I was watching the Hour League app. Yeah. It were done for this. Give it to championship. Yeah. Mm. We've all love it. I, I, I actually said when the NFL did it, I think I said it on a, on a show, I said, that is the best idea they've had mm -hmm. for a long time. Yeah. yeah. Which is probably not their idea. <laughs> so, <laughs> don't <eat> eat food. <laughs> <laughs> you'll get that. I get that. So, I, I, I actually think that why I have a smell like that, and it's been getting better and better. Yeah. I don't know what the numbers are now. I've heard somebody put the numbers down the other day, how many people are using it. It's incredible. Yeah. So, mm. why don't everyone just have on it for nothing? Yeah. Get a massive sponsorship to do the to the league and, and, and then maybe roll it out each week, different sponsors. But yeah. I actually don't mind the coverage or I don't mind the commentary. I love watching it. I, I, I have no problem at all with watching that. I mean, you can watch more than one game. If they get it right, you can watch three well, Of course, five. they can well, do as many games as they want. But but the thing is, you still need to appeal to a wider audience. You know, that's, well, do an highlight that's, show. That's a, that's, a de that's a dedicated rugby league audience, mm. which is great. And it, you know it's good they're doing it. I, as you say, I think it's been an incredible. And the innovation. youngsters would rather watch an app than anything. So well, you want to get young people yeah. in, go to old schools and say, "Here's the yeah. app. Yeah. Sell the app. Yeah, yeah. Sure. I mean, promote be, the app, Martin. Be, I, I yeah, think yeah, yeah. it's the way forward. And yeah. I, my my, my step and that, I'd say, "Oh my God, app every time." Well, once you can drag them in, it the, the, the key thing is how do you get them into go around every school and yeah. get the app and promote it. Say, "Make this." Hey, to be fair, I did the women's Super League game on uh, Sunday, which was Cast v Wigan, and that was live on the Betfred. Facebook page, yeah, so that you didn't even need the app for that. That's just scrolling through social media. I, I do get what the point on the app, though. You can preach the converted a little bit, can't you, with the app? So it's, well, it's just, just getting it, it out. Yeah, yeah get it out there. That mm. means sell. RFL could get five or six people commercials ground mm -hmm. country selling it to yeah, all yeah. schools. Please watch our product. It's a great product. It's for nothing. Yeah, you know, maybe a, if the long term they're looking to get five pound a month for it, that's probably where it's going. But hey. Yeah. I'd, I th I'd pay five pound a month for it. I would for watching championship. You can keep it free though, and you can get some kind of advertisement. You've got it. like a, an in-app advertisement. You get them on all. I used to watch the Bradford one, and I'm watching mm. it live on Facebook, and, I, and it did. It stopped me. Only thing it scares me, it stops me going ground. Yeah. A couple yeah. of times I've sat up to Godsell and thought, I've seen roast dinner through the kitchen. I thought, <laughs> no way am I moving. <laughs> I banged that on, and I thought, I'll have some of that. And I'm sat there, and then I'm, I'm and I've got a lot laugh because I don't know if you always notice it. You get all players coming on, you can see them coming on, and it's hilarious because, <laughs> like, you'll get one on and you're thinking, there's got to be 500 players watching this game. Yeah, They're yeah, coming yeah. on from every angle. So, yeah. there is, a, I am sure, if they if they get the right people involved, they could make that absolutely attractive. Can yeah. we talk about Brian McDermott's comments? He uh, lit the, the torch paper, doesn't he, James, with uh, some of his comments after the game about if we still have small northern towns in finals and everything. What did, uh, what did you make of that? Yeah, it's do you know it's one of those things, and I completely understood what he was saying. But mm. he, he wants the game to go. If anybody knows Brian, you know he's somebody he loves rugby league and he wants rugby league to be the the biggest it can be. So I get what he's saying with with your Salford making finals and things like that. But mm. he just wants the game to well, go. Well, Salford so. would claim to be a big city, wouldn't they? But uh, you yeah, know, and, and, it, and, it, and it, yeah. It, it is a city, and of course it's the city in which the headquarters now the BBC is located in the north of England. So you know, but but. I mean, there's there's no conflict between having big big cities and relatively small towns in the same competition as long as they're all viable. Yeah, you know, yeah, I, don't, definitely. I don't think, you know, it's not one or the other, is it? No, just no, because, definitely not. Yeah. Just because Toronto are in in the competition doesn't mean Castleford. Are I not. think what he's saying, in it, if you if you break it down, he's saying Toronto to go to a sponsorships and TV deals with Toronto. Yeah. Or you go with Featherstone. It's the commercial aspect, isn't it? Of course it, it is. That's yeah. the, if it's you, easy if to tell them playing London, saying, isn't it? They yeah. were saying, if you, that's what they were saying. He wasn't. Yeah. Brian's mm -hmm. from Wakefield. With yeah, eight yeah. brothers and sisters. He's from the small town. Yeah, 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 he yeah. was saying, if you're going to take it to a wider audience and sell it as a commercial aspect, Toronto rolls off the tongue mm -hmm, yeah. easier than Cast Feather or Wakey. Well, I don't, I don't, I think he's telling you exactly the truth. What do you yeah, mean? Yeah. Here's a, I, you name yeah. anybody who'd argue with that. Here's, say, here's a question. How do we change perceptions of Toronto? How do we get rid of the attitude that they're bad for the game, that they're going to kill clubs and this and that? Or is that, is that an impossible task? Anybody who's spotted rugby league over 30 years, don't allow them to talk. 
<laughs> Sounds <laughs> enough. Martin? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know who's, who's saying it's a bad thing. Well, I, I, you I go on social people. media, I mean, come on. Well, I, I spent, I mean, I spent some, my entire evening arguing with people. Let's, right. let, let's face it. But yeah. I think anybody with any uh, imagination at all can see that what, what, what Toronto are capable of doing for Rugby League. I don't mm. see what the uh, Sabian argument is. I think the concerned. only people that don't like Toronto are the ones that don't want to pay to go watch their team over yeah. there. That's, that's kind of where it is. Really, and then they all love it when they get there. Yeah, yeah, yeah really, they have a great time. The, the really interesting thing about Toronto is that we'll get fans going over there who actually don't necessarily go to many games over here because yeah, yeah. I mean, my son-in-law, for example, is a keen Hull FC fan, but my daughter doesn't go to games. But on Sunday night, when they when they won, after they'd won, yeah. she texted me saying, we're going to Toronto next year to watch Hull. And, you know, you think right. I'm not going, I definitely <laughs> am. Yeah. You know, we've got friends in Toronto too, we want to go and see. So let, 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 We're going to have to wrap it up. We're going to have to wrap it up. We need to go for a break. That is all we've got time for the first part of the show. Coming up, we'll speak a little bit more about Toronto, but then on to the Salford Red Devils and the grand final. We'll be right back. You've spoken and we've listened. Rugby League Back Chat is available on podcast form from all your best podcast providers. If you're on a trip down the M62 or a flight to Toronto or Toulouse, download Rugby League Back Chat for the best debate inside Rugby League. Welcome back to part two of this week's Rugby League Back Chat. Craig, straight to you because you were going to make a point before I rudely interrupted you. And then I've just, just, just said that people who've and I've never probably left their areas where they're born and where they live and probably, you know, been to Benidorm and think it's the big world that go into Toronto, they should do a preview yeah. on them. They probably, people go in there will say, that's just changed me aspects, me, me. they'll be going back again and again and then all of a sudden, you just, they, they need to just highlight the stories. Rugby yeah. League doesn't like quick change, they like, yeah. <laughs> so you, you've got this slow grind and this, uh, it won't like that in our day. Yeah. As Wayne Bennett famously said, if you listen to fans, you'll be sat with them. Yeah. yeah. Move on, quick. I agree. Right, let's move on quickly to Salford. Salford are in a grand final, James Clare. Who, are you, it's a cliche, everyone said it. You could not have predicted this to happen, could you? It depends when you'd have asked me. If the start of the year, no, I couldn't have predicted it. But if you'd have asked me five, six weeks ago, then maybe I could have done, just because you see what Salford have been doing and the way that they've been playing and some of their key players have been stepping up to be the best players in Super League that they rightfully deserve it. Like we said about Toronto winning the million pound game and the best team in Super League, mm. they've beaten the beaten us at Castleford, they've beaten Wigan, that they deserve to be in that spot. Martin, in terms of stories, how big a story is this for the game? I think it's the biggest one for a long time, actually. Probably the biggest one since Toronto came into Rugby League in, okay. a, in a curious way. I mean, people may not agree with that, but, but Salford, I think Salford are a really important club in Rugby League. You know, they're located in the heart of Greater Manchester, which is a massive conurbation where Rugby League doesn't really have as big a presence as we'd like it to have, despite it being in the north of England. Mm. And I think they're going to attract a lot. Of, I mean, they're, they're going to take a lot of people to Old Trafford on, on Saturday. I'm, fairly, I'm yeah. fairly sure about that. But hopefully a lot of those fans will stay with them next year and boost their own crowds. Because, you know, they're in a stadium there right next to the M62 motorway and yeah. it, 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 you know, they've got the potential to be a really successful club. And I, and I hope they are. But, I mean, I, I must admit, I was one of those people who didn't think they'd beat Wigan on Friday mm -hmm. night. So it shows how much I know. That's true. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but, and, you know, likewise, I don't really think they'll beat St. Helens on Saturday. But my God, you know, yeah, yeah. they've been proving us wrong all season. So I won't be too surprised. I, I, I just think as well, the fact that Ian Watson didn't get the Coach of the Year award on, on Sunday night, you know, if, if, if ever there was any additional motivation, that's it, well, isn't it? So. Can we talk about Moneyball, Craig? Come on, this is your favourite quote. You want to trademark it. <laughs> we, 
the concept well, you, you is... Know, you, that's just from you pinching it all the time. But. Well, it's because you talk to me about it all the Thank time. You. Salford have the second lowest budget in the league. They're in a grand final. Is this the best case of money ball yeah. that Super League's ever seen? Yeah. And they even think for coach. I don't know what Ian's on, but I bet you if you throw his wages in yeah. uh, and Belize's his wages, I think they're probably a bit lowest at that end as well. Mm-hmm. Um, unbelievable. Uh, I can't believe it. Back to James's point, I spoke to Brad Singleton yesterday and uh, Gailey, we had a bit of breakfast. And Singo said, to be honest with you, the best pack we've played against this year. Mm. He said, they rolled us at Leeds. Right. And he said, don't underestimate them. They, uh, they rolled us. And he said, it's one of them where you think, God, has that just happened? And then, mm-hmm. yeah, it has. And they've done it again. <laughs> and they've done it again. And to lose a franchise player in Louis and carry on, this is the biggest. Uh, I think it's a grand final. I think a lot of people who want bothering going are suddenly buying tickets. I know because a, a lot of people, I spoke to a top chairman yesterday and he said exactly the same. He said, they probably just saved the grand final from, from maybe getting a certain amount mm. to now getting a bigger amount. Yeah. Everyone wants to watch the fairy tale. If Watson pulls this off, I'm lazy. I mean, it's, I tell you what, I, I, I'd be laughing. You, you, my one, my one's an interesting situation, isn't it? Because <laughs> yeah. he, he come with all the, you know, and he, he did, whether you, whether you, whether you respect my one, whether you don't, whether you look, he he brought he brought a, a massive marketing tool he to South. Whether he lost a lot of money as well, and then in it way now that's all gone, and then yeah. all of a sudden from nothing, these have gone and picked the bones up of a club. Yeah, and now we're in a grand final. This is what Marwan did it for. He yeah, did yeah, it for yeah. this one day where he would have walked out at Old Trafford. <laughs> I think that'd have been game over. Yeah, and now Blaze is going to be walking up, looking yeah. like you know Peaky Blinders. But, but being <laughs> honest, <laughs> at the start of the season, you know, people were saying, "Can Salford survive? Can Salford survive? Are they not just such, on the pitch? Are they are they the in pitch. such financial? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah not, both on and off the yeah, pitch. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, are they in such a financial mess that they will ultimately?" run to ground, you know, and people were thinking that, weren't they? And it, the, the transformation is just absolutely unbelievable. That's why I say it's the biggest thing since Toronto came into the competition yeah. in terms of a story. Mm. Um, and it, I mean, it, whether, it, you know, it's completed on Saturday night or not, it's going to be really interesting. I said earlier on to you, I, when I've met them, uh, the, the, the two most astute, Ian's probably the most astute coach on recruiting, I've mm. said. Why? Tell the story. Uh, well, just a little insect. If you go and mention it, I can probably mention any player in any division of Watson will give you a full appraisal within about a second. How far down? So he, as, as down as you want to go. I'm not saying I'm, maybe even amateur. I do believe he could. <laughs> so I've met him this year and I threw, I, I'm, you know, I'm liking to me money ball and me, he's a player who I'd look at and he'll go, yeah, yeah, left hand carry like that and he's to improve that. And he, he, he must live and breathe it because a lot of the other coaches would have no chance doing that. Would not even start that. <laughs> He knows everything to the detail. He's got Blaze, who's an ex-agent, so his negotiation skills will be right yeah. up there. You know, a lot of clubs are now doing it where they're saying, get get the agent on your side. Yeah. He spent 10, 12 years negotiating, finding out where they're talented, let him work for us. Yeah. Blaze is probably mm-hmm. the best advocate of saying an agent would be better than anybody else at doing that job because that's what he does for a living. I keep saying, yeah. mm. how can you be better than me when I ID talent? That's what I do. Yeah, how would yeah. you negotiate a deal better yeah, than you've done? Yeah three deals in four years and they've been crap. You know what I mean? And we do deals, we can do 50 deals, mm-hmm. 60 deals a year. So that's what you do of our history. Right. Mm. Belize has probably gone in there and found it easiest, but I do this anyway. <laughs> <laughs> if we if we go through the squad, James, I don't, I'm not going to go as far as Phil Clark's comments and say they're championship players, because they're clearly not. But yeah. there are players in there. Greg Burke wasn't wanted by Widness last year, who were yeah. the whipping boys. Uh, Gil Dudson came from relegated Widness. Chris Wellham arrived at Salford after finishing fifth with Bradford in the championship. And there he goes, Tui Lola here. We spoke about him last time on the show. I'm not getting involved in that. He'll <laughs> rinse me again. But, you know, they, uh, another player that went not wanted where he was. And together, they've, they've come and built this grand final side. I mean, how... How impressive is that? It's all down to Ian Watson, obviously the coach. Mm. It's 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 up to him. It's one person's job, and then his backroom staff, obviously, that get people on board and get people playing for each other. And it's up to them what message. Sorry, it's up to him what message he delivers to his players and whether they buy into it or not. Because you could go to a player and say, "I want you to do this for whatever reason," and they could say, "No, nah, I'm not interested in doing that mm. for you." But you could say something completely different, and it's up to him how he manages his team. And he's obviously got them all on board and. Whether the championship players are Super League players, he's got them play at their, their best possible level as them as individuals, and yeah. but, that's but what, made it good um, for the team. When you, when you look at the key, the key player, of course, is Jackson Hastings, and he's he's been the cement that's bound everybody together. It seems to me at Salford, 
he's been such an enthusiastic guy and he, he's done so much for the club and he's got involved in the community and mm. and so on and you know that I, I i just don't think you can you, you know if he'd not been there would would it all have happened it's hard to imagine uh, that it would well, have been did it, i don't know i didn't think the report, louis went to the didn't yeah. seem to make a cat and it, listen he's they found jackson they give mm. him the chance it's both ways mm. i bet you jack one question i'd like to ask jackson is and, and you lads should probably ask it is I didn't know what was going to happen when he stayed because I believe he'd have stayed. I don't think he'd have signed at Wigan. I think yeah, if, it, yeah. if, he, if he'd have pictured this, he'd have gone, are you kidding me? I think that would yeah. be a really difficult question for him to answer though, wouldn't it? Yeah, I you don't know. know. I'm just saying that's one know, thing I'd it's, like to yeah. question. I think, it'd be, I think that'd be something I'd love to ask him and say, yeah, yeah. as an agent, if somebody said to me, right, you're going to Wigan, but you can win a grand... He's probably gone to Wigan to win trophies, as he's mm. probably thought in his head. Yeah. He's now in the grand final. And he's probably loves it at South and he loves all the people. He'd be thinking... We could actually win stuff here now, and that that has to be a big. I've done it before when you've done a player yeah. and he's looked at you and gone, "We've ended up finishing fifth. The yeah. club is going to." And then he's just left a club that's rising like a. I, was, I, guess, I mean, I it's interesting say, that you know that they won at Wigan on Friday night and took about four thousand fans Salford, but the crowd was only about nine, just over nine and a half thousand. You know, the, the the Wigan fans really didn't 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 go to that game. Is Jackson and, Aston's the sort of signing Wigan need to help with this crowd? Problem this decline. Got them in it. This yeah. decline. I don't know, but there's something. There's something about the about Wigan, isn't there? That's just not quite right at mm. the moment. I mean, they've got some great young players. They obviously got hammered by Salford on Friday. I mean, it wasn't just that we didn't think Salford would win, but you know, Salford winning by that sort of margin was quite incredible, really. Mm. It's an easy read. Yeah, it's an easy read. What your answer is? Yeah. Well, you keep selling your best products. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, it's all the young players it's, it's, as well. It's, it's, a, it's a disregard for the fans. Yeah, yeah. I'm not. Well, I've, I've said this yeah, to, to, to my friend who's there. That's an easy read. Mm. You cannot sell your best product every year and expect to keep reinventing and reinventing. Mm. It, the wheel will stop. Yeah. You need some franchise players. They've lost from. I mean, if you go through it, Bateman, Sam Totty, I mean, the list is endless. Yeah. yeah. Of them selling their best player at the time or letting Even Burgess go. left and then came back. Leeds never did that. You look at Leeds when they were on top for them years. Leeds, oh my God, if you if you knocked on Gary's door for Danny or Kevin or Rob or Jay, he'd have murdered you. It's yeah. a famous story with a Catalan chairman, uh, an agent's rang Gary and said, oh, I've got this prop. He's a French international. He's at Catalans. And he said, uh, and Gary goes, oh, I really like him. What's the deal? And he said, oh, I want... 110. Gary said, is that over two or three years? <laughs> <laughs> I said, I've got, I've got the England captain. I'm just, you know, that yeah. they kept it close. They wouldn't, yeah. have, Gary would not have talked to you yeah. if you'd have asked to take one of them franchise players. I tried with Danny. Yeah. I once rang up a bit about a rugby union, uh, Saracens years ago. The phone were gone. Mm. You know, there were no ticket left for you at the game. It was gone. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to have continually done that. Come on, yeah. that, that's an easy one for me. Yeah. Moving on to the grand final itself. Can they beat St. Helens, James? No, I don't okay. think so. I'd love to say yes, and I'd love to say sort of they've done it and it's the fairy tale ending. But for me, the way Saints have been this year, that they're the best team, and mm. I just hope that they don't beat them by too much. Is there a loser now? Can the sport lose in this grand final? You've got the great team that could go on and fulfil their destiny as such, or the fairy tale story is done. Well, the game would lose, I suppose, if Saints did win easily, because yeah. that would burst the bubble at Salford, wouldn't it? And it, it, it would be very disappointing. But I think that's highly unlikely. Um, and, I mean, when we say, uh, you're right to say, obviously Saints have been the best side, but, but they were the best side before they played at Wembley, weren't they? And yeah. Warrington found a way to beat them. That's and very true. Took them, on right at the, took, took them on down the middle. And it's interesting, actually, that... Um, on TV a couple of weeks ago, Kevin Brown made the point that, you know, other sides have worked out how to beat Warrington because they, they play a lot down the middle, you know, yeah. take, t- taking the op- opposition pack on. But, but, but St. Helens couldn't beat them on that, on that particular day. And, you know, I think we, we've said that, you know, the Salford pack is, is much stronger than what most people think. Mm. And, you know, there won't be a pushover. You know, Saints have got Wormsley and Thompson in the front row and Roby. But there won't be a pushover for them. And, you know, I, 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 I don't want to go too far the li- down the line in predicting a Saints win here. No. Well, it's, you know, it's, 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 trust me on this, I was at the Challenge Cup like you lot were. Yeah. They've got to have a bad day and you've got to have a good day. Yeah, yeah. They are the best team. Yeah. Salford have got to pray to God they have a bad day. Mm. And, and if they have a very good day, you can even the score and get... 
I watched the game. Say, say Ellen's challenge could be that they'd gone a different way that first 20 minutes. I, oh, yeah, if that, I've if never I'd seen a given. roll on like that. I was yeah. sat there looking. I'm sat next to Simon Moran and I'm looking, thinking, I'm going to eat my dinner before it gets 20 nil down here. I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to get as much as I can down before he gets monk on because I'm thinking, <laughs> this is going to be a big score. I, I was looking for exit and then they, they, they kept in the game. They kept in. Trust me, they say th Ellen's have got to have a bad day. Do you think that try being disallowed at Wembley just had a negative effect on St. Ellen's? I just mindset? think they kept in, they so. kept in the game, and they yeah. kept in, you know, where everyone knows, you know, playing the ball, Daz Clark, quick play, it, Masala on it, you know, it, 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 on a short lead, they've got a box kick. It, it was basic tactics that on the day Saints got frustrated because they've rolled teams. Yeah. Mm. James will tell you, Gailey used to say when they play at Cass. He said that first, if you first 20, it's all over. The game is literally all over. It Gailey goes, I've never seen a team come at you no. like that. He goes, it, you cannot do anything. Because if you start putting hands in rook, you're going to get penalty, penalty, then it's all over. Mm. I, I've never seen a game where rugby played as fast what they do ever, ever. They are rapid in everything they do, aren't they? There's well, no even the, the, they're saying the forwards are faster than the wingers. Mm. It's never happened. It has never, you know, you <laughs> what might, you know, but you yeah, imagine, yeah. Can imagine t what from 60s say he's faster than... I know I the do, Bionic Barrel were quite... Yeah, I don't think we've seen a team like St. Helens, actually, before. Never. Not, you know, it, they are a unique side. Psychologically, though, James, and we know what players say in interviews, no, it won't bother us, it'll be motivation, everything like that. Will that Challenge Cup defeat, the semi-finals defeat last year, will that just etch a creep of doubt into the minds of those St. Helens players going I don't think this? it'll necessarily be the Challenge Cup defeat. If anything that I think could negatively impact the Saints players is just the kind of pressure because everybody's saying Saints are going to win and yeah. the fairy tale Salford. So Salford are going to go in that game like they have done the underdogs and mm -hmm. they're just going to go in relaxed and just enjoy it where Saints are already talking about how good is it going to be to lift a trophy even though you lost the Challenge Cup and yeah, yeah. kind of end the season on a little bit of success even though you failed a little bit. So yeah. Yeah, that's see, I, where the pressure will come from. I think Saints overcame the hangover from the Challenge Cup final when they beat Wigan two weeks ago when they came out and hammered them 40 points to 10. Yeah. You know, they came out right from the start because they'd read, you know, everybody was calling them chokers, weren't they? And I, I think their players had read all that and understood it and... And, and came out and, and decided, you know, we're, we're going to show people here. And they did. And, you know, everybody thought that'd be a really tight game, yeah. Saints and Wigan. Mm. And they absolutely blasted them. And I think, I, th I think they beat Wigan and beat Wigan for the following week as well. Wigan, Wigan didn't recover from that, yep. that, that defeat. Right, you know. prediction time then, just quickly. Start with you, Craig. Say when I said, if Saints have a good day, it'll be, it'll be 22 by 22. If, if the rain comes down as it does on grand final nights, you know, we always remember the classic cast turning up. <laughs> the boys were going to put the entertainment on and Danny kicked him to death with basic <laughs> game plan and won. Yeah, so yeah. it depends what the weather's like. That might narrow it up. But if Saints play well, they'll win by 20 plus. Right, I'll ask these two after a short break. We are going to have to go to that break. Now, coming up in part three, more Super League predictions and a bit of transfer gossip. We'll be right back. You've spoken and we've listened. Rugby League Back Chat is available on podcast form from all your best podcast providers. If you're on a trip down the M62 or a flight to Toronto or Toulouse, download Rugby League Back Chat for the best debate inside Rugby League. Welcome back to the final part of this season's Rugby League Back Chat. Before the break, I got Craig's prediction. Grand final. Come on, James. And you, you said there's not really a chance for Salford, so what's the I know, Craig said about 22. I, I'm predicting it's going to be close, 50, 60 minutes, as you'd expect in any final, both teams playing, but I reckon Saints are going to put another 22 just in the last 20 minutes alone, so Saints by about 30. Wow. Okay, Martin? You, well, I don't think that, but um, I mean, I thought, I thought Wigan would beat Salford and I got that wrong, and I think Saints will beat Salford on Saturday, so that's, you know, if any Salford fans watching this programme can feel fairly 
happy about that, I think. But um, I think the crucial thing is how the game starts. The first, the first 20 minutes, if Salford can hold Saints at that point, then their confidence will grow as the game unfolds. And, you know, I'm not sure about James' point about the last 20 minutes. You know, if, if Salford are ahead, I think they'll stay ahead at that point. Game of opinions, we'll find out, won't we? Yeah, on, yeah. Uh, Saturday was right and wrong. Right, let's move on. Luke Gale is a Leeds Rhinos player, Craig Harrison. It's a deal that I'm sure that you worked very, very hard on. What can, what can you tell us about this, some of the finer details? To me, what's the easiest deals? You, know, you usually say a top player doing a deal. <laughs> it's just like, Why is that you, then? Why is that well, then? because so you, 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 you're in, there's no insecurity. The clubs know what they want. The player will know what his value is immediately. Mm -hmm. You're not walking in and the club are trying to bar bargain you down. I like to think I'm good at my job. I don't go in demanding money. I've never done that. I've mm -hmm. always said to lads, if you start doing that, you, you're gone. Mm -hmm. uh, it was just the easiest deal. The hardest thing was probably pulling him, pulling him from Cass. Uh, not me pulling him, by the way. His love of Leeds, that that pulling, yeah. and the and the guilt to what he thought he owed Powley and the lads. He, 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 James will tell you, Luke loved the lads. He changed willingly. I think he, he told me he was a bit upset when he gave yeah. that speech. Do you know what? Yeah, and, yeah. And, and he rang me about it and he said, look, I want to share this with you. And I was like, wow. I've, he, heard, I've heard Gailey speak a thousand times in front of the team and he's told us what we need to do on a field and he's had a crack when we've had a beer and laughed at everybody. But I've never seen Gailey ever until that one moment when we lost to Salford when he explained that he'd be moving on to Leeds. Mm. And he, you know when people are fighting back <sighs> tears and you can feel like the throat getting swelled up and things? I've never ever seen that from a man like him. No, so no. That's how you know it, whether or not he wanted to leave, like you say, they're pulling away from him, but it's upset him a little bit. So the deal, easy, the deal. John were great. You know, John's, John's and Kevin, they both knew at the jobs. <laughs> uh, we, we, we're just making sure the egos don't get involved in, <laughs> in uh, a bit of this and that, but it were good. It were a lovely deal, thank, thank them all, but I'd say the hardest bit was the, his friendships. You know, yeah. I think Paul McShane puts them at that. He plainly lost his best mate, and and and, and Adam and, and the lads who were, you yeah. know, gaily has been there, and and, and and I want to say this to everybody: the more we get used to that happening, so it's not it's not the deal was fantastic for everybody. Mm -hmm. Cash should be. It, it's not professional to know the details. You lot of guests, you know, you said, "Oh, is it this?" You know, yeah. listen, it's a great deal. It's a great deal there. It's a good deal. Yeah. Leeds probably have took the risk because mm -hmm. they're going to say, "Here we go," and this is this. But I tell you what, if he plays. If Gailey plays like we know he can, they have made a great deal. Castlefield got a great deal. Castlefield have already got their replacement ready in yeah, place. Yeah. They're gonna have, you know, we took we took Truman in on a on a on a you know on a twelve grand on, on a small contract. Look at what they've got. They, James will tell you. Gailey said to me, he said it on, on a podcast the other day, Craig rang me up and said, I've got someone to replace you at Cass. Mm -hmm. And Luke thought we're kidding. I said probably and England. You're gone. <laughs> Gailey said it the other day that I said it. I said, no, I was serious. I, and he goes, I know you are. It's happened. He'll tell you, true, he's a freak. <laughs> he's the best player I've ever played with. <laughs> they all say it. Everybody says it. Is he that good? Yeah. yeah. He's the best player yeah. I've yeah. ever they seen. They don't understand it. Yeah. People outside of it yeah. don't get it. And no. Gailey goes, on podcast, he goes, no, no, he's that good. <laughs> why, yeah. why is he that good then? What What is it about him that's that good? Do you know, it's, for, for such a young kid and even taking that away from him because he's, he's such a title player but you know when you see something in training where sometimes you just have to stop and you clap or you yeah. applaud and you think you just shake your head thinking what what's just happened there and people do one of them they might do one a year some players might do one every five years they might even get one in their entire career true is the kind of guy that's doing two three things every single day like that yeah. every single training whether it's you're absolutely chucking it down and it's snowing in pre-season or it's beautiful weather in mid-july He's just doing amazing things. Well, what they don't give him his aspect for. He's as tough as Teak. Yeah, it does. Oh, like, you can God, tell he's that. Kind of his, a defensive half, yeah. Like? He's, he's, he's def he's a, and, uh, you know, he's the defensive one. He, he's defensive for a young kid. He's unbelievable. Yeah. He don't mind having a clock. Have you ever seen a kid with patience like he had? He just sits there. You, his personality is that laid back. He's horizontal. <laughs> so you won't get a word out of him. Yeah. So when the, they said to, when the Wigan put pressure on him, yeah. oh, we're going to do this, I said, mate, I rang Wigan. I said, are you kidding me? 
Go and spend 10 minutes with Truy and tell me he'll know what pressure is. He hasn't got... <laughs> come on, pressure's Truy getting extra bite or Akka burning down. Don't <laughs> talk to me about the Akka burning down. That was a terrible day. <laughs> Actually, we, we made him our Rookie of the Year last year, the Albert Goldthorpe Rookie of the Year with League Express. And it's really great to hear what you're saying because it just confirms what a great decision that was. Well, um, you got it wrong this year, though. I, was voted, I thought Truy should have been right up there this year. Uh, you're talking about the Young Player of yeah. the Year. No, I'm talking about our newspaper's you Rookie Mo of the Year. Have you we we gave yet? it to Morgan Smithers. Yeah, I know he rang me. Of Wigan. Yeah. He said, said, can you give him? Can you give me the check yeah, so no. I can? <laughs> no, we'll give it to him direct. <laughs> he's, re he's ready for that. He's ready for that money, though. He wants to spend it in the Acker as well. Though. Absolutely. <laughs> the um, the Acker full count. on on um, on Danny Richardson. What what what's your take on him going to? Castle well, you've got to bear in mind, Danny Richardson a year ago was in the dream team, wasn't he? Uh, after that yeah. great year with St. Helens last year. Um, he's not got in the Saints team that often this year. Um, they've, 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 got, they've gone with Lomax and, and Farge. Um, you know, and ultimately three into two doesn't go, does it? So mm. somebody's got to not be selected. And yeah, there's a young kid coming who's he's in the leg, same bracket as Truman. Absolutely. It's called Louis Dobbs and get ready. Yeah, yeah. So that, <laughs> trust me, if you see him to want, if you see him, you'll know exactly what I said to uh, Thingy. He's, he's played once or twice, hasn't he, already? I think. No. Oh, is he not? No, I it's the first year. It's just on. Well, right. Anyway, I don't like, I'm not going to give it that because yeah. Rush will kill me about topping him up and yes, saying that. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> but, remember that name. On, on, remember the name. Right, on another note, there seems to be a lot, quite a lot of halfbacks around on the market. Jamie Ellis has been linked, who's so obviously at Castleford. Uh, you've got one, Ryan Briley, whose future seems to be up in the air. Ryan Hampshire. Ryan Hampshire, who's obviously left Wakefield under whatever circumstances. Um, Richie Myler, Deck Patton. Where are they all going? What's happening? I think most will, a couple will stay with the clubs because they'll be on a contract and if they can't mm. get a club, they'll stay in. They're on good wages. Why would they? It's their prerogative as a player not yeah. to have to move. Um, but Hampshire's not, is he? His contract. I just said, yeah, yeah, the ones that are, the ones yeah. that are free agent. Ryan, at the moment, probably. I, I, I think. Uh, I've got some. You've got to be very careful on this one because we've had some sticky the way, uh, and I don't mm. want Michael. Michael offered us a deal which Michael deemed as being fair for Wakefield. Mm. There's nothing wrong with that. Mm. We said that wasn't the deal that we required. Mm. So it's a stalemate. Mm. But both parties, I think. Uh, it's when this happens with a player, you're probably going to move on. Mm. There's nothing you could do. They've got that left in cap. Mm -hmm. They offer you that. We say, we think we've deserved better than that. We've given you two years yeah. on this money, and we think we've deserved this. So when it happens like that, then it opens up. I don't know. The, 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 Toronto will have to come in the market and take some players. To yeah. Your problem with halfbacks, and we complain we haven't got enough, mm -hmm. but potentially... The four or five halfbacks that were in, so London have gone back down. They might have wanted a couple. You look at Morgan Smith's gone that way. Yeah. Hull Kiara still looking. Mm -hmm. I've heard Huddersfield. Uh, I mean, I've had Holmesy on yesterday. You say they better not be getting, you know. So you, yeah. uh, Toronto. They've been linked with Aidan Cesar, haven't they? Again. Well, that's you know that. So 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 there's certain ones where you look who still haven't made that recruitment. Mm. But Hampshire, I really have a high regard for him. I mean, he's apart from anything else, he never seems to get injured. But he's, I, I think he's played really well for Wakefield. He's played three yeah. positions, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah. Played he's, full he's, back six and then he even fought last two games yeah. went to win Tony, didn't he? And he? Yeah, yeah. Listen again, he, it's such a touchy subject and I don't think fans get it. It's nothing personal. No. People no. say, oh, I got be, you're all idiots. It's nothing personal. You know, mm. Ryan were frustrated after a game and said something uh, in the paper saying, yeah, yeah. I think I deserved it. That was, I said to Ryan, you shouldn't have done that. You don't, you don't do that in open. Yeah. Thing. That needs to be done because what rugby league is. No, I think it's great when he does do it, actually. Well, but, <laughs> rugby, but then every coach, every coach then goes. Sees it, yeah. Oh, I don't Awkward. Know, I don't, I, it, looks a bit, it looks a bit petulant. It, and all of a sudden, James will tell you, if that goes round. <coughs> the awkward squad, but the last guy who was a member of the awkward squad was Jackson Hastings, wasn't he? When he left Manly and everybody thought. But oh, he's not. I'm saying to you, you know, Ryan's not awkward. You don't play no, every no. week if you're awkward. No, no. no Clayton's not. been 17, 18 year old. He's, do, you yeah. know, do you know what? He, 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 if you knew what, what I have to deal with every day being an agent, he, rugby league are quite scared of personalities anyway. Don't, mm. don't believe the myth. That the game wants these big personalities. No, I don't. Look who, look who England give the centralisation funding to. They give it to the guys who were probably unmarketable, as in good players, but were never going to go out there and no. they never give it to the characters. Yeah. No. That, that is never going to happen. Our game has got to change. If there's one thing we can all change, it'd be that we should give it 
to the David Fafitas because they're the ones who are going to put mums on seats. Of course. The, the whole KR situation with the halfback, what what are they doing? What well, that seems well, like the obvious talking point, half, right? Now. Open and looking for two, two, maybe stroke three halfbacks. Yeah. But you've got Mikey Lewis there. Yeah. And they've got Mikey. Mikey's, Mikey's he's, he's in progress. We got you know Mikey's learning his trade. Mm. He learned it at Newcastle. He's a great kid. Yeah, I think he's Roger Millwardish. I said that when he was mm. seventeen. He wow, was, that's a big comparison. Yeah. Some of the old fans said it. I said, well, watch. Okay. Mm. Listen, I, I always said this about Mikey. I told him when he went to the England trials with Yorkshire, mm. uh, Lancashire, and I said to him, oh, I don't think you'll play in the test match. Callum McClellan's coming back from Scotland <laughs> uh, and he's a real player, you know, and, I'm, and he looked at me and he went, and I went, oh my God. And he's saying to me, and he was a year younger than him, I'm better than him. Mm. And I thought, sense. wow, that, and I can remember like making a fob cop to Danny and going, you've got one, because he's just giving me death stare when I mentioned McClellan. So. Yeah. On another note, you talk about what agents go through. I imagine it's been a busy week with you for Bra from a Bradford Bulls perspective. You know what, I, I tweeted something and it's caused quite a bit of thing, but I'm, I'm going to say it as I, as I see it, as I've always said, if I come on, I'm not going to play no games. It's disgraceful. Mm. You know, Andrew, it was only... Andrew's been telling us how to run rugby league for the last two years, and then yeah. no one's been able to phone him for 12 weeks. Yeah. You know, whatever week it is, the club don't deserve it, the fans don't deserve it, the RFL need to be held responsible for who they put in. Everybody runs away from it, and they're all, I'm sick of all do gooders and all. No, this is a bad situation. This is the fourth or fifth time it's happened. Mm -hmm. Andrew needs to come and give everyone his answer. You know, I got off with a rocky start with Andrew, then I started to get on with him. I, I, I can't believe this has happened. Mm -hmm. Russ McFarlane's not been, you know, they've not been answering phones, so the players can't get it on. You know, we, yeah, no yeah. one dare say it. You know, it, it, it's every in the game knows. Mm -hmm. The players can't get John Keir can't get on them. The, the, there's just been a myth. Something's happened, bang, gone. Mm -hmm. And there needs to be serious questions asked to what's happened. We can't let this happen again to Paul Bradford. We cannot. No. Absolutely. No, no. You know, we've all been involved. We, I, I had a Sam Burgess uh, sign top from his first squad number. Mm. When the first time it happened, I threw that in. I was doing auctions. You're doing all this, try and raise money. Yeah. Well, Auditor got Auditor got quarter of a million at money. You know, yeah, we, yeah. we all just give... If it's true, they've sold season tickets and took next year's money already. Come on. Come on, that's not right. No. Well, no. And James, that needs to be said out loud if it's happened. It does. I agree. From, yeah. from a player's perspective, I'm sure you've spoke to some of the guys there. You, you were there yourself. I'm sure yeah. you still have relationships with them. How, you know, what was their mindset like at the minute? It must be awful for them. It, do you know, I've, spoke, I've spoken to them very recently as well, and it's that emotional distress that's just, I mean, you don't even wish it on your enemies, let alone your mates. And it's mm. it's just, I mean, I've got a lot of love for Bradford and what they've done in the past. And I grew up not necessarily supporting Bradford or a Castleford fan, but I loved what Bradford did. They were the best team in the country by a mile. But the kind of things that they're putting the players through and the staff, but most importantly, all the fans that you say are putting money in for season tickets, it's mm. just... It's ridiculous. If you do that in any other kind of business, whether you're, you're on a local tiling shop or anything, you just, you're bankrupt and you go into prison for kind of fraud. Yeah. When you look at like the pension kind of stuff, mm. and I know there's a, an investigation going on, but if they've been taking money from a player's wage to put into pensions and they're not mm. equaling that amount to pay in it, it it's, it's just, it's a simple word of fraud, isn't it? Martin, this is, it is that serious, isn't it? This, this is potentially. It's more serious than... We all recognise, well, probably, I think Craig recognises most of all how serious it is, but far more serious than most people recognise, I think. And yeah. there's, there's people looking to take over the club. Mm -hmm. We hope that will happen. But whoever, you know, does take over, Chris Brereton's yeah. been mentioned, you know, ex-director at Wakefield. Somebody's got to seriously get hold of things there and sort it out. Uh, otherwise, God knows what the future of the Well, we all get be. thrown. I've been in four different... My debt's always been in every single time somebody else takes over. Right. Mm. So you're just, I've been in last four, then they've paid, yeah. <laughs> and I turn up again, I'm going to say, I'm going to help Bradford, and then I go straight into the thing again. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's the same uh, jump. I, I said, we, we, you know, we'll get paid last. Is it not telling that mm. they're now selling the club? Or Andrew's... I don't even know if he's selling it. He might just be giving it away. I don't know, but, he, you know, shit. Well, it, say, just, it, it just seems to me that he's, you know, as, as Craig said... He spoke about how the game should be run, how people should do this, how this isn't happening, this isn't happening. And then you look at what's happening at Bradford House. What's yeah. going on here? Yeah. Well, absolutely. What can you say about it, really? Well, that's uh, like the man who's telling you how to live your life, right? Yeah, and then yeah. you, he's coming out of brothel at three in the morning. You know, you're like, <laughs> come on. You know what I mean? You cannot. <laughs> <Anyway>. <laughs> so where do, where do they go from here, James? What, what, from, what, what do you, from a player's point of view, what would you want to see from the Bradford Bulls now? I, I wouldn't even know where to start. This. 
it's sort of, it's got to be in a sense completely disbanded, completely started again, almost burnt to the ground and yeah. gone back to a day one, brand new business, brand new everything, write off all, all the debts that need to be written off and don't even have any ties. Kind of moving away from Oddsall might be good for them in a sense because they're not even talking about the olden days yeah. and just start again. And if they want an opportunity to rebuild right from the very bottom, that's what they have to do. But I mean, th there'll be staff and things there that have been there yeah. through the olden days as well, that they need to have a full gut out even from them as well, including the players and completely start again with somebody brand new. And I'm going to have to stop you because we've run out of time, I'm afraid. Okay. We have run out of time for the whole season. Thank you very much to my guests today, Martin, James and Craig, and in fact, to everyone who's been on the show this year. We'll be back next season, but for now, goodbye.